Welcome to this Colors of the Cornea segment brought to you by the VetVine Specialty Consulting Service. In this segment, we're going to talk about the color red. Remember that the cornea is normally clear and colorless. When we see red in this tissue, we are seeing evidence of inflammation because we're actually seeing the presence of blood within blood vessels in that tissue. So when we see corneal vascularization, we further classify it as being either superficial or deep. In this example, we see superficial corneal vascularization in this Shih Tzu. We see these bl blood vessels within the tissue. They're superficial, and we know that because they're tree-like and branching. And in this case, they're encompassing um, the entire cornea. When we see superficial corneal vascularization in a patient, there are certain things that should come to mind as potential rule-outs for that inflammatory response. The first is a qualitative or quantitative tear film disorder like keratoconjunctivitis sica. A dry eye will become inflamed and we can see superficial vascularization. We also want to take a cl close look and examine for any adnexal abnormality, any aberrant hairs or cilia such as dystichia or trichiasis, the presence of a lid mass or a conjunctival mass, uh, in this case there's a suspicious mass effect in the conjunctiva of this patient. And certainly we want to examine for any conformational abnormalities, such as entropion or ectropion. Dogs with allergies, uh, whether it's due, a, due to atopic disease or other uh, potential causes for allergies, can also develop a keratoconjunctivitis. So we want to take a careful history about this patient. And in the case of cats, uh, an infectious cause uh, that is commonly um, associated with corneal, vasculariz corneal vascularization is a feline herpes virus. In the case of deep vascularization, we see a, different, a slightly different picture. In this example, we see a severe case of corneal vascularization. It is deep, it's paintbrush-like, and it's circumferential in this case, as it generally is, although it can be um, focal or segmental in, in distribution. Uh, but this is typically indi an indication of a deeper disease process within the cornea or intraocular disease. So when we see this paintbrush pattern of deep corneal vascularization, we want to think about um, a deep corneal process, such as in this case, the presence of an infected corneal ulcer. Um, we may also um, see an extension of severe inflammation from the sclera in the case of episcleroceratitis. And we may also see a deep corneal vascular uh, pattern associated with intraocular disease, whether it's associated with um, anterior uveitis, the presence of intraocular, intraocular neoplasia, or um, in severe cases of glaucoma. So when we see a patient with corneal vascularization, our minimum database on virtually all patients should include a Schirmer tear test, a fluorescein stain to assess for the presence of um, a corneal ulceration because this is certainly going to impact um, our management of the patient. And uh, if the patient uh, warrants it, checking the intraocular pressure uh, to rule out glaucoma. As always, we recommend that you keep a colored set of pencils in your practice. It's a great way for documenting what your patients look like. And for your colleagues who follow in your footsteps in following up patients, it's a great way for them to document the progress um, of the patient under care. As always, we're here for you, the VetVine Specialty Consulting Service.